What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to Great Whale Road. We're doing a little mini-series on this one, just checking it out and seeing what there was to love about the game. Because I was I wasn't sure. Like on some hands, like I found myself really, really enjoying it. And then other things I was like, oh, that could be patched up a little bit. Like I think the combat is the weak point for me right now, but everything else seems to be kind of fun. I mean I like what they're going after. I'll take anything with Vikings in it, in all honesty. Anything that enables me to play a Monomarth at like plus ten in the background while I play is okay in my book. So we need to have our meeting of the clan for the year. And we've got to decide what we want to do here. My suggestion would be let's focus a little bit on farming. And by a little bit I don't mean like everything we have. We'll put two in right there. I would like to get more shepherds. Actually hunting gives us let's go with hunting. Hunting gives us furs. And then from here we could go for a defensive bonus. We could have more warriors. Uh, currently, we're sitting at... Let's see here. We've got ourselves 13, 29. We've still got 35 people. So, I don't think our population really went up all... Well, it says 36, but maybe it's counting me. Or maybe I'm bad at math. That's also possible. I count 35 over here, though, just at a passing glance. Yeah. We could... go with craftsmanship if we wanted to upgrade our boat at all but I don't know if the boat upgrade is unlocked until like the third or the fourth year it kind of depends yeah we're on day 259 right now at the time of the meeting and so you go from 259 to I think 30 or 40 before you get into the next season you start to go on raids and things like that let's put people on happier folk and more children survive Well, if we get the tradition bonus, let's see if we can get some more priests, essentially. Let's see if we can get more guys out here who are just taking care of our social needs in town. We've already got some things going up right here. We may get some new farmers. We, get, we might get some new people. Food stocks should be augmented slightly. I mean, we've already got a lot in our food stock, so we should be okay. Okay, winter has arrived. A winter storm has been lying over the island for days. Rain from the Nord Sea has been falling continuously. Neither men nor livestock enjoy being drenched, miserable, and cold. The smell of wet wool and wet animals mixes with the smoke of the cooking fires. You need to improve the mood of the villagers before there's trouble. Let's see, we can have them bring out the ale, we can have a wrestling contest, we can start a contest by reciting a heroic poem, but also add drinking to it as well. You know, they used to have ancient Vikings and the Danes and people like that. They were a lyrical culture. They used to have what could be considered the medieval version of, like, a rap battle, except it was, like, a poetry slam, essentially, where they would just, like, battle each other with words, like, making fun of each other in poem, and then it was considered, like, a funny thing to watch in the evenings while you ate dinner or while anything else was happening. It was like a little social gathering, basically. Let's do that one. Let's have a rap battle. All contestants have to drink a horn with ale, then recite two lines of a poem. Forty-eight lines later, the last drinker falls face first into a table. Everybody agrees it was a great feast. See, I know how to be a leader. It's all about promoting alcoholism. That's the only way to be a good leader. Oh, good. We got an extra priest. We got an extra farmer. And we got an extra hunter now. So our population has grown by three. So that's pretty cool. See, I knew I was right. Thirty-five. I think it counts your leader as one of your people. So, we produced a lot of food like 3,000 food we're sitting on a decent stock of food right now without really having to worry about it all together I think we got f so the event was food po- oh that's right that's right it with the event overviews it brings the stuff in from last year so you can review if you want so we had the food poisoning on the boat we had our first journey and then we had the winter storm event all right so is the blacksmith capable of doing anything awesome just yet I don't know if the blacksmith is, but it looks like we're mostly stuck with the same goods that we had before. That's okay. I think you can access your boat somewhere. Yeah, you can upgrade your ship from here. My suggestion would be that we make the ship a little bit larger. Its current size is 68 feet, 19 width. Uh, we've got 19 tons of weight, and then the sail material is wool. If we upgrade... It requires 55 population. It's going to require 8 craftsmanship. 
and 90 trade goods, of which we just don't have that many. The speed will go down, durability will go up, ship capacity will go up, and we will be able to bring a larger warband when we go out on the warpath, which means that raiding will be a much more viable option. But we'll probably want to wait on that upgrade until we get a few more heroes that are willing to come to sea with us. Now, once you're sitting here and you're like, what should I do? You should always check your journal because they're going to give you new tasks that you should be doing every single year. You have to travel south to revenge the dead. Your laws demand a price. The Saxons would not be able to pay a war gold that high, or a war gold that high. So war gold is essentially a tribute that you pay to end a war, in case you were wondering, a Virgild. It's the concept of it all anyways. So the price will have to be paid in blood. Make sure that you are ready as you will travel through hostile territory. So when you attack somebody, there's a price attached to that. There's a, like basically a raiding cost for them not to retaliate on you. And so you could raid them and then pay them a shit ton of money afterwards. And they might forgive you, but that's what the Ver Guild is or the Ware Guild or whatever it is. And it's basically war gold is how you would... Or war money is how you would translate it in a nutshell. Anyway, that's a rough concept. I, I don't speak any of the Danish or Northern Scandinavian languages, so I'm sure somebody will add to that down in chat. Uh, let's bring... Let's bring Floki. Hilda's morale is kind of low, so we'll bring Baugi instead. So we've got Kettle, we've got Floki, Baugi, and Bera. Should be good. Let's load our goods on up. For this trip, we've got more than enough furs, so I'm going to strongly suggest... Well, we might want to let these stack up, though. It said we needed 90 trade goods in order to make the thing happen. And so... I don't know what was... I think it was maybe tools that were counting as that. We may want to let those stack up for a little while. Instead, let's bring... We'll bring 60 weight there. And we'll bring 15 of our furs. And we'll just try to hunt along the way. Actually, no. We'll hunt along the way without bringing the furs. We'll keep those for ourselves. And then we'll leave room so that we can capture things along the way. Sound good? Mm, let's load some tools on here, too, just in case. You never know. Something might break and we might need to repair it. It seems like a wise idea. The wisdom of keeping it with us. It's speaking to me. You are finally ready. Kettle will travel south with you. He says that you are no longer useless pups and at least able to scare a kitten. But he is not certain how you will fare against Saxon wolf warriors yet. All you want to find out is what happened to your warriors firsthand, and nobody argues when you decide to first visit your dead Jarl's brother in his burr. Is it cold in the burr? So Arxum the Borderlands is the first stop. So it's right here. We will probably stop there. And once we arrive, we will hunt for a day or two. We'll see what we can accomplish. But we'll try to make this a timely trip, but I'm trying to make money here as well. You have certainly improved as a crew. Most of you can hold a rowing rhythm now, despite the pain in your arms and backs. Kettle has been working you hard, practicing your shield wall every night. Everyone is relieved once Arxum comes into sight. So we're on the edge of Danish territory right now. After meeting the local chieftain, a young man approaches you. He has inherited a small farm which comes with a Danish thrall. He is selling the farm as it only provides meager returns. He was planning to hand over the thrall to the local Woden priest when you arrived. He offers to sell the Dane to you. And so one of our guys said, as he is truly a Dane, then we should buy him. And then who are we to withhold a sacrifice from Odin, even if they call, them, if they call him Woden here? Either we buy him or they will hang him from a Woden oak. Yeah, he's a Dane. He's one of us. We pay five silver for the old man. You want to? Do you want to insult Woden with a sacrifice like that? You haggle over the price for the Greybeard like he were a Jarl's son. At the end, you have to pay more than you were planning to. You send the formal thrall back to Ulfersted with a message for the elders to take him in. Oh, it cost me 15. That's not too terrible. But our population went up. It'll tell us what happened at the end of the year so we'll know what job he was assigned. I mean, he's an old man. Uh, I'm not really sure what we expect him to do there. But what we can do here is we will send some to feast. So morale is low for him. So he will feast, as will he. And then our war leader, along with Floki, will go out and hunt. 
and then we will stay for a night. The crew is roasting a goat. The bones start to pile up when a wolf appears on the beach looking for an easy meal. I don't think it'll mess with us. Although with a wolf, there's like specific rules. You gotta like stare it down or something like that. I don't remember. You gotta make yourself big and like match its eye line or something. If you have more, I don't know. Um, throw stones and branches at it. It vanishes into the forest, but you make sure your food is safely stored for the night. Just get it out of here. So how did we do with our hunt? We got two pelts. Okay. Could have gone better, but that's still 50 bucks more than we had previously, so you know what? Bam. Making money. And while we're here, we will probably turn some of that. So we've got 50. I will probably turn some of that... Yeah, let's share the rest of that with the uh, with the clan. We'll bring some honey with us. Confirm it. Although we're at a weird, not right number right now. Uh, we can have four more food on board before we're overweighed. So I'm going to bring that just in case. And then we will set sail. Now it would appear that we sail for Umram. And so these little buttons right here is you can either raid it or I think you can... Uh, Stop there and camp. I'm not going to do either because who cares? We're going to keep on trucking. we got to make good time. The speed of the ebb flow has caught you off guard and the ship runs aground in the mud flats. We can drag the ship to a channel nearby. We can take a break and play Taffel. Or we can use the time and make some repairs. Let's play Taffel because that'll drain energy. That'll drain morale. So it's like everyone had a good time. Once the uh, flow, once the tide goes back down, we'll come back off it. It's okay. It's not like it's a fatal thing for us. You weren't able to find a proper place to rest. You will be forced to sleep on the ship. You sleep on the ship, you lose morale and energy and stuff like that. So don't worry about it too much. But it is something to keep in mind. Eiderstead, Saxon dogs bark and bite. This should be a mandatory stop, I think. Whereas Umram is, I think, a, a temporary, like, yes, you can stop here, but you don't really have to. It's kind of like a stopgap or whatever. This is the longest journey most of you have undertaken in your lives. You have left the Danish-Saxon borderland behind you. From now onwards, you will only find Saxon settlements along the coast. Hama is still a long way to the south, and everyone is excited and nervous at the same time. Hey, it looks like our village. As you start to get comfortable with some ale and freshly baked bread, the village headman approaches you. He introduces himself as Raging Hard, and he asks for your help to kill some outlaws who are camping nearby in the forest. He is clearly uncomfortable asking Danes for help, but he seems in dire need and offers to pay you in food and hack silver. We need the practice. Should we get involved? Yeah, let's get involved. Let's sharpen our weapons and move into the forest. You guys haven't seen combat yet, and so let's do it. The forest is dark, but the camp is not far from the edge. You don't waste any time and attack. So the goal in this, it's kind of chess-like. You're supposed to be killing their leader. A full, drawn-out battle in this game is a terrible plan. Basically, he's trying to kill my leader. I'm trying to kill his leader. It's a bum rush. Just make it happen, you know what I mean? We have cards. We start out with only our leader deployed. We have a turn timer, so be aware. Now, what we want to do is we have Kettle as a card in here, a Danish hero, so we want to play him on the battlefield. We can't use either of these cards until the third turn or the fifth turn, respectively, so we can shuffle them. And so that means we just put them back into the deck so that hopefully on the next turn we get something that's better than what we've already got. In the meantime, let's move everybody forward. I do wish this was animated a little bit nicer. I, none of this is animated, it's just like little chess pieces banging against each other. I do wish that there was like attack animations and stuff like that. In addition on the boat, I would like it if it didn't do that thing where it opens and closes the screen over and over and over again. I'd like it better if it faded into the next screen as you resolved events. It just creates a punctuation in the gameplay that's a little bit jarring in my experience. So we got Baugi and we got Blind Fury. I don't think he's going to rush us, although it looks like he got a bad hand because he didn't play any soldiers. That means we need to press our advantage now. He can move one. 
Oh, if you can only move one. Oh, never mind. You can only move once, even if you choose to move one square. Okay, never mind. Let's get Baugi onto the battlefield so that we have the numerical advantage here. And then we can't use either of these cards till the fifth or the sixth turn. So we will shuffle those back in in the hopes that we get more soldiers. No soldiers and no cards we can actually use next turn either. He still hasn't played any soldiers. Now the first time I'm going to give you some reckon. I'm going to let you see how my last fight went. When I fought this last time he used his first two turns to deploy like six guys over here. And it was a mess. And so obviously there's a lot of RNG that goes into this when it comes to like what hand you can get versus what hand you don't have. And so I'm going to move Barra up. I'm going to move Kettle up, and we're going to start working on this guy. Now, he's got 14 HP. We're going to click the attack icon. She can choose Slash or Slash. It doesn't really matter. They're both kind of the same. Apparently, this one, I think it's body or legs is what you're targeting, by the way, in case you're wondering. So you can go for a torn meniscus or a pierced foot. The torn meniscus, I think, makes it so he loses attack, and the pierced foot moves, lowers his movement. She should get quite a few attacks here. So he blocked two, and he took six damage. So that leaves him with two out of four defense left and eight HP. It is now his turn. Nope, that's not what I wanted. It's now your turn to attack. He should attack four times. If he attacks at the legs, he'll have an 89% chance to hit. I'm going to go with that. He landed three hits, so there's three HP gone. Kettle's going to continue moving up because I think this guy's going to reinforce soon. It's not going to matter because we should be able to finish him off next turn. And there we go. Now he's playing soldiers. He must have gotten a good hand right there. One hit. Oh, two hits and five misses. Okay, that's not good. Got two guys moving up right now. I'm going to move Baugi up to here. And let's just attack somebody else to say that we did. Give him a little wound to remember us by for being pillagers and raiders. Said the pillaging raider. He gets seven attacks. Good lord. He's got an oak war spear. That guy has got some serious attack damage on him. Okay. Two blocks of hit and a miss, but he got a pierced foot. So he ain't moving too much after this. We will continue our assault on this guy. He's only got five HP. There goes the last of his armor. So that should be it for his block. Oh, no, it's per turn, I guess. I guess it's per turn. I had no idea. I thought it was for the entire fight. It's apparently per turn. All right, that's cool. Not going to matter because Barrow went in on that guy. Barrow went in on that guy hard. I'm assuming they're going to add more animations because they do have some limited animations in the combat right now. I'm hoping they do add more, though, because this is really one of the only things that I don't like about the game. Everything else is adequate or better, whereas with the combat, it's like I'd like to see a little bit more animation, a little bit more go into it, a little bit more movement. You know, just some walk animations, maybe some swinging animations, little stuff like that. They could even be little five and six frame animations. They don't even need to be like fully animated at 30 frames, just like something light to denote the fact that your character is fighting would be fine by me. I mean, they could even be one frame. It could be your character swapping from their normal stance to just them in a fighting stance with the axe on one side to the other side over and over and over again, you know, just to give the impression that they're swinging back and forth. Either would work. It's just that it feels a bit minimalist for me right now. But that's like my only complaint, I swear to God. That's like the only thing I'm worried about. So did he actually pay me? I don't think he actually paid me. I think we had that much gold already. Well... The trader might have something. He's got war dogs. I don't know what war dogs do. I think they give you like a passive buff to your defense so you can release. These are Irish wolfhounds right here. Wolfhounds from Ireland and bear dogs from the lands of the Finns. And as you can see, the game is still in development. It's still in early access. They're working on things. And so there are things that are unlabeled and stuff like that. If you see it, don't freak out. It's because things still are being worked on as far as I understand it. I'm going to send everybody else out to hunt today. I want to get some furs. Let's send everybody out. We got plenty of energy, and there will be times to rest in the future, so we'll go for a night hunting trip. This is a good partridge hunting country, so you wander off to shoot some of the birds. After two missed shots, you grow frustrated and vow to hit the next one you come across. As you pass some hedges, you see movement in the corner of your eye. I'm going to turn calmly and take aim. The man in front of your bow is certainly no partridge, and while you don't like him much, you lower the bow and continue the hunt. I had a feeling. I had my suspicions. So we took on board several furs, 24 food. 
Most of that is not going to be able to come with us on the boat, so we're overloaded. My suggestion would be, first and foremost, that'll clear out 16 of our weight. We will trade that over and confirm it. And then we will also take, that's two weight right there. So that gives us minus 48. Give me two back. Oh, that only takes us to 100, so I got to add five to it. There we go. Perfect. And so we've made even more money now. My next suggestion would be possibly getting rid of some of this food so we can take the dogs on board. If we sell 10 weight worth of food, 35 is still enough. We can then bring on board two war dogs, which will really, really, I think, anyways, boost our defense at home. These are big dogs right here. I don't know if you've ever seen an Irish wolfhound, or if you've ever seen, like, a bear dog, or, for example, like a Siberian husky, a Tibetan mastiff, like dogs that were bred to kill human beings and were, like, created to defend you from bears. But, like, a Tibetan mastiff is, like, a horse-sized dog. They're enormous. Irish wolfhounds aren't much... Irish wolfhounds are a little bit thinner, but they're still big. Like, I'm five foot seven, and an Irish wolfhound can look me in the eye without taking its feet off the ground. Like, Irish wolfhounds are giant. Saw one at a shelter one time, and I was like, holy shit, he can look through the window. <laughs> uh, let's stay for another night, and we'll gather some rumors. A whale hunt has been unlocked. So I think, now if we go to the map. Anyway, so I, that's the first thing that I've ever gotten that was not actually, like, a. have gotten rumors that didn't matter before, but that one's the first one that it said that it unlocked something. I don't see a whale hunt around anywhere. I don't see a whale hunt in England. I don't see a whale hunt around, so maybe it pops up later in the season. Maybe we whale hunt, like deeper down into the season on the plus side our morale is good let's set sail shall we rain is pushing the ship towards the coast with all of her might the incoming tide is driving you towards a reef let's go ahead and have everybody start rowing the crew is tired but the ship is safe everybody loses energy from rowing but hey we can't get beached out here. We've lost some food because it's been another day. Your watch is interrupted by shouts, balls, and whoops. Two of the crew have started a fight. You can bet on Raur or Router the Squirrel, Bjorn the Rib Breaker. You can break them up and get everybody to row. Tired men don't brawl. I'm going to bet on Bjorn Rib Breaker. R router might be small, but he's fast. He slips between Bjorn's arms and smashes his fist into his bullocks. That's, that seems unmanly. You weren't able to find a proper place to rest. You will be forced to sleep on the ship. Proper is kind of rough terminology right there. It's quite possible that you get attacked while you're sleeping whenever you go to shore. It doesn't really matter because the combat is fairly simple to resolve, but still. Bum, 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 Viking stuff. Oh no, we got the oyster event again. Mm, everybody drink ale. I know that that gives us no like penalty, so I'll stick with it. I don't know if it costs us anything. It might cost us like double food or something. We weren't able to sleep today either. It's a long voyage, though. You don't really think about it. We've only made it this far. Give that some thought. The wind is changing to a strong breeze from a four. What do you do? Um, we can lower the sail and row at half travel speed. We can lower the sail and row at travel speed. We can start tacking and beat to wind. We're tacking is typically what experienced sailors do, so we'll tack. You make a mess of it at the start, but improve quickly. Yeah, attacking takes some practice. And so our ship speed appears to have gone up slightly. How that affects our travel distance, I don't know, but we're about halfway to Hama. Little under halfway, I guess. 
We weren't able to find a proper place. We're sleeping on a ship. But we do have birds flying around us. Birds for scale, right? You notice some seagulls clustering at a distance. A quick glance at the horizon shows a sleek longship with many oars approaching rapidly from aft. Hmm. I don't know what's happening right now. It appears as though we've been bugged. We've been bugging with the uh, the option that we're supposed to choose didn't pop up, but the uh, thing is working right here. It probably gives us the negative option when that runs out. I don't know. Let's find out what happens. I've never actually let the timer run out, so I suppose the bug allows me to at least expand my game knowledge a little bit. Looking at bright sides, I suppose. You managed to lose them between some islands and sandbanks. All right, that's cool. We're out of time for right now, so my name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerd Castle for the next episode of The Great Whale Road. I will see you all in future episodes. Bye, everybody.